Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Susan Lynn. I'm a psychic and a medium. And today you're tuned in to one of my video series called Way Out Wednesdays or the acronym of WOW. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining me today. Every Wednesday I drop a video just like this where I talk about things that are kind of way out there. I might be talking about aliens or soul contracts or any number of things. If you're interested, please check out the playlist. You can find that by clicking my icon, which will take you to my main page, my YouTube channel page, at which point you can navigate to playlist and look for wow videos. And if you're interested in this type of content, please subscribe. That way you'll not get a notification when a video drops. You'll know it's Wednesday. <laughs> All right, everybody, let's get started. Today we're talking about sacred spaces. Now, don't get mad at me if I don't cover your sacred space. If you're new here, you might need to know that I'm channeling this message. I am going to be about 60% of my communication to you is from my spirit guides that I use specifically for this type of video. 40% is Susan. That's just making sense of everything they're showing me, which is a lot sometimes. You're about to find out. So the reason I say don't get mad at me is because Susan, um, if I had all my faculties about me, might be interested in a particular place that is not mentioned here. Uh, sometimes when I get done with these videos, I'm like, well, why didn't we talk about this? Or why didn't we mention that? It's, it's a combination of things. It's what the spirit guides want to talk about. And then number two, it's sometimes I just miss it. You know what I mean? Like the information comes and goes so quickly that I just, I'm still trying to figure out what they just said. And they've gone on to give me three more things. So sometimes it just doesn't, it just doesn't come out. So these videos are not comprehensive, right? And also I would say, I would repeat one more time, I'm a psychic and a medium. I'm connecting to a source that is not here in the physical plane. Maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm miscommunicating or mistranslating. Please use your own judgment and discernment. Now, with that, let's get started. Sacred spaces. I, I will say that, that they wanted me to start off with um, Stonehenge. Oh, now they're talking about Easter Island. They didn't talk about that a minute ago, but now they are. Uh, so Stonehenge, Easter Island, Machu Picchu, uh, many of the Aztec, uh, places, the Incan and Aztec spiritual places. Of course, um, there was a place that they were, the pyramids, right? There's so many, honestly, head scratchers. Like, well, how did that get there? Like Easter Island, how did that get there? What is that? What is the purpose of that? How did these people, these ancient peoples manipulate these stones that are so huge to build the pyramids. Why are the pyramids in the places they that they are? Why are they the size that they are, right? So there's lots of things here to really dive into, and let's do so. So looking at, and all I've done is pulled up a picture of Stonehenge on my computer so that I can connect to the energy of that. I do want to say to you guys that I don't know anything about these things. Like I, I'm not a person that watches ancient aliens or I don't watch, uh, I don't watch anything. Actually, I don't even watch TV. So, and I like that for the reason that whatever I'm telling you is coming from them. My, the 40% of my ego that's involved in this, that's communicating, that's taking that information and communicating it to you. I would rather be a blank slate right? I would rather not know anything because when you know something, then you start, your ego just gets involved. So it's really better this way. So I will uh, tell you right off the bat that these are, the guides are saying these are ancient civilizations, not just, um, they are, they are power centers. There's a reason that they're where they're at. Uh, long, long, longitude and latitude. There's a reason why they're located where they are. They're located on power points. They're showing me a grid, a ley lines, a grid. X max marks the spot, right? This is where this thing needs to be. What happened was these hunter gatherers or whoever these first 
people's were, they were much more, they were much, much more connected to energy than we are today. Now, let me explain that a little bit further. Your life depended on it. You needed to pay attention to your intuition. If if the hairs are standing up on your back, you're not likely to not pay attention to that because you learned that if you went hunting when something was telling you, oh, something's not right, I have a bad feeling, I have a gut, bad gut feeling about this, you might die, right? So they were very in, in, the guides are saying they were very in, it was a symbiotic is the word they want to use. They were very much aligned with energy. They could sense when a storm was coming in. They certainly were very aligned with the animals. They understood bird calls that would maybe notate danger. They would they would understand when uh, fall would come early, what th- would that mean when spring would come late. They were very much, very much aligned with the energy. If you think about today's humans, we live in an air-conditioned house and a box. Uh, we connect through another box. We don't even know what the smell of rain is, right? I mean, we just become less and less connected, truly, to energy in many ways, okay? But back then, this was a really important thing. And, and, the, and the guides are showing me, for whatever reason, that by the time humans got to be, say, you know, in the 1800s or even the 1700s, we were disconnecting. By the 1700s, we were disconnecting. But certainly, it began in the 1500s, 1500s, 1600s, 1700s. Maybe that's the rise of religion. I don't know. But they're just showing me that man started having houses, castles, right? They started uh, gathering together to protect each other. Um, They just weren't living with the land. So why is this important? Well, because before there was a Stonehenge, before there was an Easter Island, before there was a pyramid, before there was uh, anything, there was energy there. There was energy there on that place. Like the guides are saying now, Native Americans have identified, and, and frankly, first peoples throughout the entire world have identified sacred places. This mountain is sacred. This river is sacred. Why is it sacred? I think think that the, however you want to call them, but the people that, that came into these lands that met these first peoples and heard this mountain is sacred, they didn't believe it. They weren't connected to energy. They didn't understand and they didn't care. To them, that mountain might have gold or that mountain might have timber or that mountain just be might be the place that they need to go. There might be a pass through the mountains and they don't care, right? So it's very interesting how the guides are saying when these things were created, the reason that they were created, first of all, was the fact that these humans felt energy in a way that we don't feel now for sure. And we didn't even feel in the 15, 16, 1700s. Okay. Now, so that's how this got started. So then these people said, this is sacred. This is a power center. We we can experience things in standing in this place. Perhaps the guides are saying they experienced visions. Perhaps they experienced, and and the guides are saying, you know, you're thinking visions like hallucinations, or maybe they would go and this is where they would go and do some kind of ritualistic kind of exercise. But the guides are like, this is where we're going to, we're going to take this up a notch. The guides are like, There were, these were portals, okay, just to call it what it is, these areas are portals. Now, I've done a video on portals, but it was really more 
more along the lines of portals in your house or portals on your land. And now I see a little something the guides have done here. I that uh, as they they work with you, they trick you. I swear they trick you. They had asked me to do a a video on portals, and I meant to do a, a video on portals, and then I forgot, and then they suggested that I do this. And here I am. This is this is the video on portals they wanted me to do two weeks ago, but I just didn't do it. And and they got me to do it in a different way. It's, it's not that I didn't want to do it. It's, I, I don't know. Anyway, it's just funny to me when I catch them in the act. <laughs> so here we are. These things are portals. A Stonehenge is a portal. The pyramids, uh, one or two of the pyramids, Actually, I have to talk about that separately because that's a whole different thing uh, they're showing me. Uh, but uh, Machu Picchu is a pyramid, uh, is a portal and the um, Easter Island. I mean, these things are portals. Before they built the man-made structures on them, they were energetic portals through which, through which beings and entities appeared to these people. So you can imagine that if you're a hunter and a gatherer and you live in a very simple, you know, house of some kind, hut, whatever, whatever structure that is for you, and you literally are subsistence, you're living on the earth and with the earth. When there's rain, you have food. When there's drought, you know, you're really connected. Just imagine that you're in this place that has energy and you feel it. Now, I would tell you guys that it, it's a repelling energy. It can be an energy that feels like, whoa, whoa, that doesn't feel good to me. That is why we then started to develop these medicine men, medicine women, or these uh, witches or whatever they were, because they could handle the energy. They could work with that energy. It repelled other people, but if you had a certain ability to work with the energy, you could be in synchronicity with it. Okay. So it had this energy. Then we're, then we start to develop the fact that there are certain members that can actually penetrate the energy that can actually be in the energy that can in some ways wield the energy. Then we start to have uh, customs. We start to have these, um, experiences, but these prescribed customs, I don't know how else to, religious um, things that are, that happen. Or if we don't want to call them religious, whatever they are, worshiping of the power or, or you know, or, or um, whatever it is. So that's how this kind of started, right? So then as these, these people that were able to go in these portal areas, which could just be a piece of land, right? Or it could be a mountain, it could be a grove, it could be a part of a river, it could be anywhere. Okay, so now you have these people that can go in there and they can, it's sort of manifest. Uh, I think that they were able to have visions of the future. They were able to have visions that helped their people, right? There's going to be a hard winter. We need to work harder to gather our food, there's going to be a big, uh, plentiful fall, whatever it is. So then these people became, you know, very exalted, very high up, uh, worshipped themselves, right? Uh, so you have this sort of um, energy around these areas. And then they started to build the structures. Now, because these people were interacting with whatever the energy was that was coming out of the portal, whatever that was. That energy over the course of, I want to say, a hundred years, maybe, many, many generations, that energy, that uh, symbiotic relationship, that relationship with the person in the energy became more useful, more, um, more of, of a real relationship. What does that mean? That means that those, those, uh, exalted people of that particular group or tribe could go and communicate, you know, like 
like they're showing me and I'm telling you guys, I don't know anything about the Bible. I really don't. Um, but they're telling me like, was it, who was it that went on? Was it Moses? Who was it that went on the Mount? Who, who went and had the 10 commandments? It's very similar to that. They were able to communicate. They were able to get this information. Okay. Now, how we go to these physical structures is very interesting because then once they've developed this sense of, of familiarity and trust with these, with the energy that's coming out of this portal, then we have literally beings coming out of the portal. So we really have what they would have called gods. They would have called them gods. They were beings. Uh, I don't think they were evil beings. I just think they were beings. And they came to help. And you can see, you can see the, the guides are showing me a sort of a timeline of human growth. And you can see these real leaps. You know, you can see these kind of places in our development where we've just taken this big leap. And that what I'm getting is that would be where there's been intervention or help. So how did we get these big stones? And, and especially in, in um, Giza, in the pyramids, in um, Easter Island, we can, we can say, yes, they used logs and rollers and slaves. And we, we can, we can say all those things, but we don't, I don't know that anybody's ever really tried it. I don't know. I don't think it would be humane, right? To even try to create the pyramid. How could we, how could we really do that using humans? And I'm not saying humans didn't do it, but I'm telling you that there was guidance as far as the engineering. And they just showed me a picture of Rome, of the aqueducts, of all of this huge, just leaps, leaps and leaps of bounds of civilization. The Roman cities had leaps and bounds of civilization, right? And I, I honestly just don't think they were, they were smarter. I think they had help. So this is where we are. I think that these beings did help, um, did help with engineering prowess, but I also am seeing giants I'm seeing literal giants show up. Uh, there was a, um, what do you call that? Um, I don't know what you would call it. I hate it when they show me. Sometimes I see pictures and I have to translate it into words. Sometimes they give me words. Sometimes they give me feelings I have to translate into words. So it's like a whole blizzard of communication that I have to sort of make sense of and say. But let's just say there was um, a group, for lack of a better word, um, a, a species, a group, they often call us species, uh, humans, a species. It, it's what, it's just how they identify us. So they were just saying, this is a species of giants. So these giants came down. They would have been very, um, they had a very unique look to their face. They were human looking, but they were very big. Let's say seven, eight foot tall, E easily seven to eight foot tall. You have to remember that humans back in this time, uh, time period were probably you know, like four foot tall or maybe five foot tall. I don't think we were very tall. So you have someone that's double your height and they look like, um, gosh, again, I keep seeing the picture and the word is not coming, but they, they sort of they're not super hairy, but they do have hair, you know, like a guy would, like an like a not not atypical, really. Um, they they appear to be sort of um they're not white, but they're not black. I don't know what color they are. Um they have some hair on their head, their hair appears to be straight. They 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 look Cro-Magnon like they have this pronounced a bridge here, pronounced cheekbones, very large head, big people, big hands, strong, um, giants. Today, we have NBA players that are seven foot tall. It's not that 
really that un uncommon. But in this age, to have these these they, they were just huge. I'm telling you, I get the sense that their knuckle, you know, was this big around. Okay, you understand their their arms and legs were strong, big. Now, what this what these giants would do is they would there's a certain part of the process of of tilting or lifting and they would the guides are showing me closer to the ground it's hard right this is i i don't i don't know anything about physics i know about gravity you can ask certain party parts of my body about that but anyway they would literally begin the process of lifting it once it got to be off of the ground at an angle it was easier okay so these giants were the ones that would lift. Um, now, I don't know if there's any historical thing to back up any kind of big giant type human people, uh, but this is what I'm seeing. This is what they're showing me. Um, these giants were not human, in my opinion. They even if uh, you, archaeologists say, yeah, they're human, I'm just telling you, I don't think they're human. The ones I'm seeing are human, but they didn't come from planet Earth. They're, they're from some other place. They were brought in to help mankind with these structures. Now, we know that a lot of these structures are solar calendars, right? Now, we know that 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 you can stand in a certain place in a certain time of year and the sun will shine right, you know, at this spot. And the guides are saying to me, this is when we started to learn about the stars and, and navigating by the stars, right? And navigating uh, and using these, these structures as a calendar. This is the beginning of that. This is how we started to understand really the guides are saying this is how these people started realizing that up is just as important as down their whole life all that really mattered is is that there was food there was water there was shelter there was safety now they're moving out of that into wait a minute the stars do so do something when it gets cold or the stars or you know what i mean they're starting to now really see and be able to have the luxury of not having to worry about food water shelter safety and now they're able to look at the bigger picture around them and start to notice other things so you now i would say that these places are portals and I would say that there were star beings that talked to these people and they were written up or, or described as gods. Uh, we, we see a lot of these types of petroglyphs or drawings of um, these kinds of beings that, uh, you know, archaeologists and historians just say this is their God. This is their idea of God. I'm saying I think this thing was literally right in front of them literally in front of them on this plane of existence in front of them right so the interesting thing about the pyramids so whereas i think i'm getting that stonehenge and easter island and maybe machu picchu and mount shasta and and you know vortexes and and powerful places throughout the whole world exist and I think that the power seems to be centered in that structure in some way. Also, you know, the Aztecs. What's interesting to me about the pyramids was when I when I started to say the pyramids, the, the pyramids are not in and of themselves. They're not the vortex. They're not the portal. The way the pyramids are set up there's a portal somewhere in the middle and the guides would be talking about sacred geometry at this point, that there's a, a, a certain way that the pyramids are set up and it, and it doesn't have to be in the middle. So it can be, it can be triangulated, it's sacred geometry. It can be a triangulated, a weird 
you know, like pyramid, 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 and then here's the portal. It's some kind of, it's a power place and it's a portal, but the pyramids aren't a portal. The pyramids are kind of a power packs. They want to call them power packs. Like each pyramid is a power center. And then when you link them all, again, using a solar calendar, when you link them all at a certain time of the day, at a certain time of the year, this other location that's not a pyramid, but within perhaps within a, a half a mile or a mile of the pyramids is X marks the spot. That is the place. So that's very interesting, right? And, and it has to do, and, and so not to totally blow my mind because I can't handle this. So I want to say perhaps this is a summer, winter equinox kind of thing because at one point, the weird shape, whatever it is, it's, I don't even know what shape it is, but when you link up the pyramids at one time of the year, the portal's here. But when you link up the pyramids at a different time of year, the portal's here. Those two portals do line up. And, and those two portals can connect the whole thing. Which the guides are saying has not ever happened. And I don't think it's supposed to happen. I think it. I think it can only happen when the sun explodes or something. There's some kind of thing about, you know, that's not going to happen until. Okay, complicated, complicated. Okay, so it could happen. They're they're so right. Something I should also say to you guys is, um, the universe isn't a hundred percent about anything. There are no absolutes in the universe. So you would have probabilities. You would speak in probabilities. You would never speak in an absolute. So for me to say it's never going to happen, maybe that means 98% it's never going to happen, right? Maybe that's good enough for us. But there is some sort of potential where that could happen and, and, and not where the sun would blow up. But it, they were talking about the polar um the pole the pole shifting the magnetic poles shifting if the magnetic poles shift swap shift shifted in the middle of those two magnetic poles in the process of that shifting would light up both of those would light up both of those power centers and i don't know what that means i don't i don't I mean, and if I was to tell you, it would be through a human lens. And I don't know that that's the right thing right now. So anyway, I don't know if that makes any sense to you guys. But when I see these weird shapes, it just kind of blows my mind. And then to, it just, it just, it's over my pay grade. I'm telling you right now. Okay. But I, but I told you guys, you guys can figure it out. I'm sure for some of you, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, what else do I need to tell you? Okay. Right. Um, wow. I just saw something. Uh, I just saw something. Okay. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay. I do need to say to you about the portals, about people, because they wanted me to talk about this. And I don't know why, because it's very complicated. Okay. I'm going to just try to do this. Um, okay. People can disappear around these power centers. People can disappear around these power centers. You can, it's a portal. So the thing they wanted me to make, the reason they wanted me to talk about this was when I did the video on portals, you could have a portal in your house. You, you could have a portal on your land, but you're not going to go through it. It's not really big enough for a human energy to go through. However, there are other portals that humans can go through 
accidentally. Now, see, this is why I didn't want to talk about this because it's very confusing. They just literally showed me so much stuff that I could probably write a small book about it. Okay. And I can't talk that fast and I can't get it out and I don't even know. Okay. Let me put it to you that like this. Uh, humans can do it accidentally. Humans can do it on purpose. Humans have done it on purpose. There are humans that do it on purpose. Most humans do it accidentally. That's why um, That's why we don't know that they're there because if we did know they were there, there would be a lot of humans that would just think it would be cool to go through a portal and go tripping through the universe, right? It, it causes problems. They don't, the, it, it I want to say they don't like it. The, the, the guides that I'm talking to, it, call, it causes problems because then a human that was a human soul that was born here in this timeline on this realm of existence in this context, they want to call it a box should stay in the box. <laughs> we should stay in our terrarium. <laughs> we shouldn't climb out of the fish tank. We shouldn't do that because then we're not, we don't make sense. We're not in alignment. We're in alignment right now. This was our intention. This is where we are. This is our alignment. When we accidentally find ourselves outside of this existence, we're not in alignment with the existence that we have gone to. We're, we're lost. And they did mention this. I'm pretty sure, I mean, my, this energy is kind of hard, hard. I'm pretty sure we talked about lost souls on one of the videos. If you guys have a memory of that, would you put it in in the comments, I know I didn't go into it. I know I did not go into it. I did mention it. I know I mentioned it. I think it's in reincarnation, maybe. Um, so lost souls are, I, I wouldn't want to be a lost soul. They're not here. They're not there. They're they're not connected. You know, we, we have a cord that goes up to our higher self, that goes up to our creator. Um, and when you're lost, you're not, your cord is severed. And I think that hurts me. It hurts, it hurts me. Uh, it, it, it's like one of the worst things that can happen to a soul. Okay, now, so I guess I just need to talk about this for a minute. I would say to you that there, there are lost souls for sure. Um, and, and. And there are entities or groups or whatever you want to call them that are looking for them, that, that look for lost souls. A soul is a really beautiful, important energy. It's priceless. Our soul is very unique, very different. It's, it's like a masterpiece, they're saying. If you compare us to an alien or a cyborg or a drone or an android, when I say alien, I would mean that that's a different species. They don't have a soul like ours. And not to say that ours is better than theirs. Ours is different. And that's why ours is so coveted. It's so important. It's it's, I've talked to you guys about this in various videos that there's a queue of souls trying to get to planet Earth because here on the Earth, we get to experience, right? We get to experience um, all the things, the pain, the agony, the joy, the elation, the, the passion, uh, um, breathing, eating. I mean, it's this is, this is the best place there is as far as being able to experience experience so many things there's no guardrails you get to experience everything right so it's a very we're very unique once we've incarnated here a few times 
we're a very, we're a different kind of soul. And if we went and and okay, and because I just tried to say, and if we went into an alien body after this soul, after this body, if we went of our soul, we crossed over and we got we incarnated into an alien species, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. You can't put, because our soul has experienced so much. Our energy is different. Many existences only experience very little. Our soul experiences so much. So it's not like we can just go jump into anything. We really have to have a compatibility or have some sort of process take place. Okay. So why did y'all want me to talk about that? Uh, because um, because sacred spaces, I'm trying to make it all make sense because sacred spaces have portals where people can disappear. They would be talking right now about the Bermuda Triangle. Bermuda Triangle. There's several places that pilots just won't fly. Uh, ship's captains won't, won't sail through. People tend to disappear there. Now, do we find them? Sometimes we do. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes they just disappear. Again, back to this energy of these native people would have been repelled. They would have known this is not safe. We do not go there. History is littered with these kinds of things in the Amazon, in different places of the world where the native people said, we don't go there. And then, you know, the discoverer just says, well, I, I can go there. I don't believe in your beliefs. Poof. You know, something bad happens to them. So. You so I would say to you guys that what I see happening is I, I guess this is um what I see happening is there's going to be this kind of tourism that's going to develop where people are going to take you to one of these sacred sites and you're going to have an experience. Like I think um the way humans do everything, right? So you're gonna go there and maybe meditate. And you're going to astral travel, um, but it's you're not going to have any proof, right? You're not going to, a giant is not going to stand in front of you and let you take pictures. That doesn't work. Sasquatch doesn't stop for pictures. I've got a video on Sasquatch. I don't know why this is, but when when magic or, or, or you know, for lack of a better word, when magic is involved, you really can't get a picture of it. It's very hard to picture, to, to videotape a UFO or an alien. It's because the energy is, it, it blocks you. It's just like wavy lines. It just doesn't, you can't capture that. So I think there's going to be a new kind of tourism where people are going to go to these portal, sacred portal sites, and they're going to start having experiences. So I talked about giants, I talked about gods, I talked about aliens coming down. Um, I talked about leaps of civilization. Is there anything else? And I talked about portals and humans going through portals and I talked about lost souls. Is there anything else? Um, well, okay, so I, I, I often ask um, your questions before I finish the video. So I go into the future and find out what questions you have and then I answer them or I try to. Uh, so uh, somebody is upset that um, the souls are lost <laughs> and, and you know, what happens to that soul? Um, well, like I said, people are looking for the soul. Uh, the soul does not have a way back. I'm telling you, you've gone through a time line portal. You, you can jump timelines. That's, that's not hard because you're still attached to your to your soul. But these people didn't jump timelines. They went through like a wormhole. They went out 
of our realm of existence, out of our galaxy. I mean, they went through the side door. It's, it's, there's not really a way back for them. So, um, there are people looking for them. There are entities looking for them because as we talked about, those souls are very important. They're very precious. Um, and, and they want to recover them and bring them home. There's a sense of wanting to bring them home, right? to the creator or the big computer in the sky or whatever it is you think it is. But there's this sense of come home, but they don't know how to get home. It is sad. I mean, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, it is feels sad to me, um, but there's nothing that we can do. So I would just tell you guys, uh, honestly, I would say, um, It's really important, the buddy system, right? These people that go off on their own. Um, if you're with someone else, it's like you have a double connection to the earth. Okay. And and you're not you're not gonna go through two souls are not gonna fit through there together at this time. <laughs> They're saying at this time, like in the future, yes, but right now only one can go through at a time. So if you're with someone, if you're visiting these places, don't worry that you're going to get sucked into soul, you know, oblivion. You're not going to. If you go alone and you and you go on a particular solar calendar, you know, powerful day and you do something goofy like walk up and hug it or I don't know, walk between it and there's no one there. I mean, yeah, you could you could do that. Use your common sense. We're humans. We're pack animals. Stay with each other. I don't know what else to say. I don't want you guys to worry, but I don't know what else to say. It is what it is. The guides wanted me to have this message and here it is. Um, why did you want them to have the message? Just to be discerning and to know. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what else to say to you guys. Hopefully this has, you know, been entertaining. If nothing else, maybe it's been a little entertaining for you. Maybe it's been another data point. Maybe you have a lot of knowledge around this and, and you're collecting information and you're connecting the dots for yourself. And in that way, maybe this is another one of those dots that you're able to say, okay, I'm going to put this on the board. Let's see what all these other dots are. Let me see if they make sense, right? That's how, that's how I would take wow videos. Let it be another data point in the, your set of data points. See what other data points you have, connect them and see what makes sense for you. Okay. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for subscribing, liking, sharing, and uh, we'll see you again next Wednesday with another wow video. Take good care, everybody.